So today I want to talk about CodeDriver. It's a piece of fan-made software made by uh, Rotfish Bandit, a bit of a passion project for him over the last 18 months or so. And um, I just wanted to follow up because uh, today Mr. G released a video and he just sort of touched on the, uh, and I'll cut some of the features, but he didn't go in depth and really explain how to use them. So I just wanted to follow that up um, and just give you as a sort of guide on how to use it. So first off, I'll just explain how CodeDriver works. So it takes um, file traces and log files and um, basically it takes this big wall of information here this is just the last game that i played it takes this big wall of information and it compiles it down into useful information for us as you can see on profile screen so uh, this is everything here at the minute this is every game that you've ever played whether it be custom game bedlam 8v8 uh, pve this is just every all the information that we've got uh, on me anyway and so what you can do with this information is well first off we'll talk about filtering um, so we can look at, uh, let me see, what sort of builds have I run in the past? Um, so we could look at Piercer with um, Torero. And I think I tried it with and without a seal, but we'll try this for now. So this is uh, near 800 games. This is my win rate with Torero Piercer. Um, shows you all the information you need to know. Um, you can also do direct comparisons between two different builds. Um, well, actually not compare them both on the screen at once, but say, for example, uh, back in the day, I used to run either an Argus or a Doppler on my Quick Skinner build on my Rocket Pig. Um, so we can take a look for that. So we can look at, where's Skinner, 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 it's in alphabetical order, isn't it? Skinner, and we'll go for Bigfoot ST. Um, for some reason, at the moment, <laughs> Um, Tusk isn't showing up under cabins. Rot's working on that. He'll have that sorted in a day. It's just a minor wee bug. Um, but this is how we can show all my um, Rocket Pig builds. And then we can check. Let's try Argus first. So with Argus, we can see I've got 299 games and I've got a win rate of 53.85. And with Doppler on the exact same build, I've got 64.48. Um, um, now that's solo and group, so we can narrow that down even further if we like. We can click up here in solo and grouped and just go solo. And that should, so we've got 62.84 solo playing uh, Rocket Pig with Doppler. Or we've got, oh, where'd it go? One second. All modules. And go back to Argus. So 51. So there's about 12, 12, 13% difference in there. So it was actually through CodeDriver that I uh, was able to narrow down that information way back in the day and decide to stop running Argus and start running Doppler. Um, might seem common sense now, but back then to me it wasn't. Um, so that's the sort of thing you can do there. You can also filter via date range. So obviously every time you filter, all the information down here changes. So we can go for, uh, I've been playing Caucus since around Christmas time. So what we could do is Let's look at, I think it was around the 23rd I got them. So I'll go 23rd, oh, whoops. I'll go 20, ah, it's messing with me. There we go, clicking too fast. 23rd of December, all the way up to, let's go to the 13th of January, just so we can do a clean month after that to present day. So we'll go for that, uh, 13th of January. And we'll look at Chinabi with Caucus. Um, so as you can see here, I uh, had a 68.2, um, no, wait a second, let's stick back on solo here. So I've got 66.88 win rate with Caucus Janabe from the 23rd to the 13th. Um, so 67%, 25% MVP rate, or 25% MVP rate. And then we can go to the 13th of January to the 13th of February. So there we go, my win rate actually went down a wee bit, went down by about 3% unfortunately, um, although my MVP rate went up a hell of a lot, and actually drone kills jumped from about 191 to 269, so um, clearly I'm focusing drones more than I used to, that's again information that's nice to have. Um, what else can we check? Uh, we can check different um, game modes as well, so we could look at Say you want to check out in a previous event that was 6v6, you could search for that via there. I'm not sure if I played much 6v6. I'll tell you now. Well, it has already updated there. Um, so there's my six, uh, stats for 6v6 solo. Um, or you could even look at um, Clan Wars games. Um, this isn't the best place to get in-depth breakdowns for your Clan Wars games, but it does give you some information. So this is all the stats on all the clan wars games we played so 550 odd 
60% win rate, not too bad. Um, I can even change that to see how we've been performing this year. I haven't played a whole lot this year. Um, so we're going from 69.86 to... Oh, it's not doing one second. I've broke it. Oh, sorry. So we're going from 60.94% to... 69.86%, so we've went up by 10% in saying that we are fighting out of 10 league at the minute, so that's probably why our win rate's slightly higher, but that's all the information you can, uh, that's all the ways you can filter the information, I should say. Um, so date, you can search via cabins, you can search via power score, again we can just take a look and see 7.5 to 8.5, that's where I tend to hang out, and see my solo stats for that. Uh, so right now we've got 61.17 is my win rate for uh, 8k gaming and then we can try 61.17 um, we can check out 6.5 to 7.5 don't spend a lot of time down there but 52.23 um, that's probably because I can't afford a Doppler down to those power scores um, but yeah about 10% higher in 8k but it's not surprising because that's where I tend to live um, so apart from that um, there's a lot of ways you, can, ways you can filter your data um, the data overall, let me just wait until this refreshes. So as I say, this is data for all the games that you've played um, overall, your kills, deaths, assists, drone kills, kills uh, per game. This is how Crossout shows it on your profile page in game. So uh, that's kills plus assists per game. Um, this is your medals, your MVP. You don't really have to look at the MVP number because you can just look at the MVP rate. I should probably actually put a build on here just so it's not all the data. Let's go for uh, Janabi Caucus on solo. So yes, uh, here's all your information here. Uh, this here we screen here is just sort of like your averages. So it takes into account, uh, based on your filters, obviously the average scores you've got. So say I only filtered this for yesterday and the day and it had two good days, obviously my averages will be through the roof. So uh, the more uh, time you have spent on a build, the more accurate these averages numbers are going to be. And um, I wouldn't even pay much attention until you've done maybe 50 or 60 games on a build. Um, these here two wee stats here are stats that a lot of people get confused over it was just a bit of fun i think to throw it in uh, by rotfish but it's basically how many players you're worth and how many uh, bots you're worth so in this case this build is worth 2.18 players according to this and 4.75 bots not all my uh builds are like that some of them are one on one uh, some of them were less than one in fact <laughs> so um yep let me see what else is there so we've got nemesis and victim again these are will change based on your filters and um, these are just the people that i've killed um probably Janabi so maybe this is probably since about Christmas time and um, because I only got the caucus at Christmas time there and we just make sure so I'll do uh, 13th of December and I don't think any stats changed there did they oh, no they did more games I think anyway um but yes so these all adjust based on your filters um who've we got here there's a fellow rocket pig there uh, there's a rocket pig with lances. Addy's usually a hover, isn't it? Um, so yes, you can see all the different players, and also you can double click through to their builds um, on Crossite DB. Um, so this just gives you a wee overview. Might take a wee second. There we go. So uh, this here, uh, Crossite DB uh, collects stats on a lot of players, even if you don't use. CoDriver. If somebody in your game does use CoDriver, then all that information is auto uploaded if they have auto upload as a function. Um, so you click, can collect that on people who've never used CoDriver as well. Um, so here we can see 15.9 win rate or MVP rate, 58% uh, win rate. Let's see what weapons he favours. You know, you can. God, he's, he's a well rounded player, this man, anyway. Um, probably revolver or crossbow. So it's Toadfish and Spike. He favours Toadfish over Spike for his crossbows. So it's just all the information you can see. Um, this is also all the games that he has been in. Um, you can load right back through to God, however far back you want to go. Um, I'll click through to one of the games here just to give you an idea. Oh, and I was actually in this game, so I was the one that uploaded this game. Um, so yes, these are all the stats for the team. Who did what. And... That's about that. Um, you can also double click on your name to load up your profile. Um, mine takes a wee second to load, unfortunately, because I've got 10,000 games, so it just takes a wee bit longer than the average profile to load. I might come back to this in a wee second. Um, 
but I think that's all I want to talk about on this screen. Um, oh, there's a couple of more wee sections here. So we've got Maximum Glory, um, which is just uh, your best games. Basically, this highlights your best games. So for Janabi, I've got four games where I've got seven kills. And my highest score is 3612. Damage dealt, damage received. Um, using Camber and Caucus on this build. Um, and we can check, for example, if we reset our stats... And we load up, uh, let me see, what can I load up? Where's my Skinner at? Load up my Skinner on Bigfoot ST with a Doppler. I want to shit load up 8v8 as well. So there we go. Uh, I could have sworn I had a 8 kill game. With Skinner, I guess not. So there you go, uh, seven kills, four over four one damage dealt, damage received, big fit and Skinner. Um, and then also we, on the right hand side here we have your best maps. So obviously Skinner's best maps are going to be Chemical Plant and Ravenger Foothold. Much is surprised they aren't closer together at the top. And up here we have resources gained, which is just how much resources you've gained based on your filtered parameters or your build parameters. So this is just all the Everything I've gained on using the Skinner build, if we just reset that back to everything. And give it a second, there we go. So that's everything I've earned ever, or at least since I installed CoDriver, which was about a year or 18 months ago, I think. Um, so yes, all useful information to have. So the next screen I want to have a wee look at is last match and match history. They're sort of one and the same. So last match here will just show you your most recent game. You can use your arrow keys to go back and forth. Um, this will take you right, right back to your first game ever recorded. And this will take you right to your most recent game. And then back and forth to go between them as you like. You can also search them via match history. Um, but basically what it does is it gives you a wee breakdown here on the left hand side of all the damage you dealt. So here we can see... Uh, Got a wee hit on him, nothing major. Um, popped uh, Deweed's fuel tank um, and generator, so <laughs> he basically got uh, incinerated. Um, we tap on him, bit of damage on him. Sergi, I think Sergi, that was actually a kill. Um, but yep, that's just a wee breakdown of all the damage you do. If you pop a generator or a fuel tank or anything like that, it'll tell you over here, which uh, I find myself looking and checking just out of curiosity and again over here is damage received so this is all the people who did damage to me so uh dynamo got a nice wee ram on me as did deweed i think they're both actually um tusk builds those two players um fidget sergi oh god he did get a good volley on me um but yes this is just all the time for all the information and all the damage that you received during the game we break down of total damage um dealt and received in the middle here how long the match went on for and um, what map we had were on a uh, breakdown of the build so we like written explanation so it was janabi cabin non caucus with apc wheels and camber uh, with a seal and a chill and we uh, radar and oppressor and here's just your overview just your kills your assists your drone kills and score and medals and again down here is just a wee breakdown um again of just all the scores of all the different people um, and the damage they received and dealt and also these people are also double clickable so like before um you just put that on that side put that on that side and um, so you just double click the player and again if they're even if they're not uploading their uh, or if they're not running co-driver they're not uploading their games if somebody else is in the game then it'll pop up here and um, so there's been 68 games where somebody with co-driver has been in the same party as this person um, so yep you can have a wee nosy three people's builds like that um, you can't double click up here yet on their name Unfortunately, I uh, might suggest that as a feature to rot, but for the moment you can double click down here and match, it, match history is much the same as your last match, only here's just all your games that you've got. Um, we can filter these down as well, so if you wanted to just be seeing, um, let me see, uh, what can we go for? Torero with Piercer, where's Piercer, I can't see it for looking. Oh, there it is couldn't see it um so let me see the last time around piercer was around last year end of last year and we can click through on any of these builds as well to get to the get it to load up in last match for us um so you can go back through and look at previous games 
um, see which maps you did better on, um, see what part of, sort of power scores you're running. Even here, there's a few different power scores for a Piercer Terrera build, as you can see. Um, but this is just ways of uh, narrowing down builds. Now, if you want to look up stats for a particular build, um, you do it via match history initially anyway. So these here, this we call them here, is called your... Um, your build hash for your build. Now, if you change one piece of armor, this build hash will change. So every single time you change up, put a different horn on, put a different wheel on, anything, any change you make, even if you're just moving one piece two inches to the left, I think that also will create a new build hash. Um, so what you can do with the build hash is you can take that there wee number. Let me see, I'll actually go back to overall stats for a second here. Let me see. So we can take, uh, let me see, AAC2. So AAC2, um, E9B8 is my uh, caucus build with Janabe. So what I can do via this screen, um, as I say, not double clickable yet, but hopefully whenever we double click the build hash in future, it will bring you to the um, build stats. Um, so what you can do is you can take your AAC2 and go to analysis menu and build performance review. And I'll just make this full screen again. And then we can look at, where are we? Top games, AAC2, so AAC2. So as we can see here, this is the total stats for that one particular build. Now, this is this, this is only for this one build. As I say, if you move one piece of armor, it's a new build hash and it'll change. So if you want an overview of like every time you've used Janabi on Caucus, it would be better to do it via profile or via the search menu here. So we could narrow it down, let's see, um, Janabi with caucus so i've made god i don't know about 15 builds there maybe or more um so this is the stats overview for every time i've used janabi and caucus at once um so 67.5 percent win rate um i should probably put that on solo to make it fur there we go um so this is every time i've used any of the builds as far as i know and then when i click into each individual build it will give me an updated figure on it um, so AAC2 has only got 61.2%, even though it's my favourite Janabi build, Janabi Caucus build, it's actually not the highest um, stats, but it just gives you a wee breakdown of all the stats of this particular build, and um, the movement parts, the modules that you were using, etc. Um, so as I say, if you want a, a general overview, you can just use your profile screen, and you can just look at, uh, let's see, just Janabi and Caucus, and that'll just give you everything. But if you want to narrow it down to a specific build, you have to go into your match history, find the hash ID, and then once you've got that saved in your head, you just go over to your analysis and build review and search for it. And again, you can search for it. You can make it easier by search to search for it by narrowing it down. So if you know, for example, it was a Tusk, um, a Tusk build, or you know, for example, you were using Skinner, you could hit Skinner, and I could hit Bigfoot ST, and I could hit Doppler. And so here's all the builds that I, all my Rocket Pig builds that use a Skinner, a Doppler, and Bigfoot ST. And then I could go back through here and look for it. So where are we? So 3402, or 3402E2 is the one I'm using at the minute. And I can go to the analysis menu, build review, and yep, that's it there. And so that's the exact builds for that one particular, or the exact stats for that one particular build. Um, as I say, we'll like, I'd like to get this here so you could double click to find it, um, to double click this to link you to the exact stats for the build and it's something I'll suggest a lot. Um, but that there is one of the most amazing features in my opinion, being able to look up the stats for an exact build um, and seeing how it performs against others. Um, so that's all part of your match history. Um, the next one I want to talk about is Weapon Tester. This is probably one of the best features of CoDriver. Um, so what we can do with this is test different scenarios. Um, you can either test uh, the same weapons against each other with a different amount of seals or, or chills, um, or you can test different weapons all together, uh, like a sinus versus a piercer, for example. Um, so I'm just gonna, let me see, let me load up um, CoDriver or cross out here, and we'll have a nosy. So, What's an easy test we can do to show this off? Um, if we, um, let's just try, let's see, let me just make something real quick. Um, uh, 
Da -da 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 -da. So what we're going to test is, is it better to have, I've got rid of everything happening now, yeah. So I want to test here, is it better to have uh, four piercers or three piercers and two seals for example. So we'll just line it up. Oh, one second, I've actually got it on free form, so we'll want to have it on damage trial. Um, we'll probably want to cap it at about 3,000 because I think that's going to give us all we need to know here. So we're up to 2,000 damage here. One more burst should do it. There we go. So that's, we've hit our 3,000 damage there, maybe a bit of excess. And now we can click through to this window and this is all the information about this particular trial. So this is how much damage we did, this is how much hits we had, this is our burst damage, um, damage duration, you see it all here. And the most important figure probably is DPS. So 168.8 DPS. Now that we've got this trial recorded, we can go over and add this trial to comparison, which will drag this graph over to this side. And then we can run this again. So let me just remember that. Um, so it was 168.8. And then we will take off one of these and put on two seals. And, oh, whoops, where are we going? Where'd it go? There we go. And we will just have a nosy again here. So this is three piercers with two seals instead of four piercers. We can already tell that the bursts are longer. There we go, we've hit our 3000 damage. And then we can go back here and we can add this trial to the comparison. So we'll add that over. And yep, so as we can see, it's better to have uh, th three piercers and two seals than it is to have four piercers from a purely damage perspective. Obviously, um, easier stripped, but that's interesting information to have. Uh, what else can we test? We could test, um, let me see, we could do that and that, take off a bit of armor, and we can test Janabi versus or not Janabi, sorry. Uh, we can test Caucus with and without seals. So we'll just reset this comparison. And so this wee graph also uploads in real or updates in real time. So you can sit and watch it if you've got nothing better to be doing, or uh, have it open on a second monitor, which is what a lot of people seem to do. So that's stopped at 3000. And so now we've completed that their trial, we can add that their trial to comparison. And then we will see um, the sort of damage difference you're getting with two seals on it. I mean, we know it's going to be higher, but this is just, just to show off the software a bit. Now because the caucus, the um, the burst, uh, the bursts are all sort of joined together, so it doesn't you don't have burst durations or damage durations, but um, still a lot of useful information. And then we can add this here trial to comparison. So surprise, surprise, <laughs> having two seals is better than having nothing. Um, so you can check that, and then you could also check uh, different weapons. So we could look at this build, for example. So we'll do this one more time. And 
and that's us we've hit 3000 so we can add that there child to comparison and then we could see let's get rid of these in case they affect the angles of the piercers because they're quite low um, and I've got the energy left over and two seals yep so we'll try four piercers and two seals versus three caucus and two seals Now obviously with seals the uh, the damage will be different if we're moving but it'll still just give us an idea. You can do real world tests with a circle and object and fire as well so this is just to give you an idea though. Oh we're up to 3000 already we can stop um, and then add that there trial to comparison. So pretty clearly we can see that having four seal or four piercers with two seals is a hell of a lot better than having uh, three ch three caucus and two seals so you can test uh, any numerous amount of things you want to test this is all done via the damage trial but you can also use um, time trial so if you want to see how much damage you would do in a minute or 30 seconds or however long you can set that up or you can also do it free form where you just go in and fuck about and see what it says so the next window I want to take a look at is state of your meta. It's under analysis menu and then down to personal meta review. So this just gives you a breakdown of all the builds that you've encountered. Um, this isn't filtered at the minute, so this will give you the state of your meta from the very start when you install CodeDriver. So for me that's not very useful because that's over the course of uh, 12 to 18 months. So I'm going to narrow this down and just look at state of my meta this year. Obviously the meta changes that often. That, uh, looking at sort of like long term meta isn't that useful. Um, so we'll filter to this year and I'll stick it on 7.5k to 8.5k. We'll look at solo and we'll just want to look at uh, 8 v 8. And we can filter this down further via uh, if you want to see how a specific build you use uh, furs in the current meta. Um, so you could look at from in my case I could look at like a cockpit um, cockpit young wang build but I don't want to filter it down that much I want to keep like a large sample here to give you a better idea of what this does and um, so at the minute we're filtering just via weapons you can also filter via cabin and movement and map um, so at the moment this is saying the state of my meta at the moment is uh, going up against hulks powers mace fat man sinus incinerator caucus capcom thunderbolt king parsers they're the most common at the moment um, in these here columns here and um, it's automatically filtered via highest uh, games but you can also filter it uh, into descending under any of these categories and um, but we can see here we can see how many games uh, or the percentage of games that we encounter hulk and um, we see 1.35 of them on average per round this is the average kills 0.71 average assist 2.48 deaths damage received and damage average score and um, this here column over here is the most useful in my opinion so what we can do is we can filter this via going descending via effect and we'll look at the most uh, dangerous thing so this is 21 percent at the top and uh, that's punisher so that's a bit of an outlier in 8k and um, so we'll want to look at a big number here so there's young wang at 114 games and as we can see here if there's a young wang on the enemy team this is telling me that i'm 11.81 percent more likely to lose that's what this is giving me and um, again we've got waltz here at 103 games that's telling me if there's a waltz i am 10.35 percent more likely to lose that game uh, Goblin Sledgehammer 120 and 190 games respectively uh, roughly 7% increase the loss if the enemy team has one of these so this is the sort of thing you can look at um, you can also look at um, let's see if we filter in cabins as well for example it'll show you the most common uh, uh, cabin weapon combination so there's dust power obviously echo hulk i'm not sure if anybody's seen them floating about in 8.5k or 8k but they are devastating they've got about 3000 and something probably 3500 durability in 8k um it's one that i really really struggle with and this will probably tell us that let me see yeah 70 percent increase so if the enemy t or 18 near enough 17.98 so if the enemy team has one of these i am a lot more likely to lose um and it's also possibly because it's a clan that i usually run up against with these uh hulk echo builds and there's sometimes two or three of them i can't remember the name of them one of them's got called something called uh it's called something like krypton or crypt something or other and um, i can't remember the clan name but just they are devastating builds 
Um, is there any really big outliers on this? Uh, 60%. Oh no, these are all just ones now because I've included the cabin. Um, so I'll take the cabin back off again and we can even search for just cabin by itself. So here it's telling me that uh, the most dangerous cabins to me are, well there's not really much Fury Master, but uh, Echo. So there's Echo with 108 games. So again, if an Echo's on the enemy team, I'm 16.43% more likely to lose that game. Uh, which I already knew that one. Uh, so then we can also, if we take off cabin again and we go back to weapon, we can also sort uh, the other direction. So if we sort um, fire ascending for this, it'll tell me that, I can't see, look, look at a big one here, so fuse. So if the enemy team has a fuse on their team, they're 13%, 13.93% more likely to lose, whether that's um, the drones getting in the road of teammates or something, I don't know. Um, Jewel, 128 games. Um, 11% more likely to lose. The enemy team is more likely to lose. Uh, Whirlwind, again, apparently that's not a very good weapon for the enemy. Grenader, 162 games, 6% more likely to lose. So you can use all this information to your benefit. So say um, say I know, for example, was it Yong Wang we checked a minute ago? Um, I can't see it now. Where'd it go? Um, let me just filter this again. So it was Yong Wang. So there we go. Yong Wang at 114 games, 11.81% um, 11, 11 more likely to beat me. Now, say you are going into combat and you see three builds. You see a Hulk, which in my case I can't defeat, so I'm not going to. I'm going to ignore him. But I see a Yong Wang build. I know that if he stays alive, the enemy team's 11.8% more likely to win. So I focus that build. So this is the sort of thing you can do with State of Your Meta. It just gives you that wee bit of extra information to work with. Um, I think that's all I want to talk about with State of the Meta. Um, I'm sure there'll be questions because I'm probably overlooking some stuff, but um, if there's any questions, you can put them in the comments for me. So the next window I want to take a look at is Revenue Analysis under Analysis, analysis Menu. So we'll click through to here, and this gives you a breakdown of how much coins you earn per hour per mode. Um, so say, let's see, um, we'll sort this here via descending for coins and we can see that there was a wee bug with adventure mode for some reason that's at the top but next one down is clan wars so we can see um, overall I've earned 14,000 coins um, in clan wars, don't know where I spent that all, I'd love to know um, and I earned 335 coins per hour roughly and again with levy clan wars beneath that I can see um, we have 334 coins per hour. If we want, we can uh, knock this back to maybe, maybe you want to see how much you're making per week. So you could filter that. So we'll look at just this week from the 9th of this month to the 16th of this month. And here we can see if we filter down, um, the most profitable thing for me this week has been Levy Clan Wars at 617 coins per hour. And below, below that, uh, regular CW and below that, Scrap. So Scrap is making me a tidy wee 50 coins an hour. Now that is with premium. Um, so yes, handy to know just if you want to uh, keep an eye on what the most profitable rate is, for example. Um, again, we can filter here and see. So my most profitable PVE raid is Perimeter... No, wait, is it? No, oh, sorry. Uh, Frontier Defense with uh, Electronics. And that's saying that that's earning me 100 coins an hour at 256, or 256 coins total. Um, now that's overall, as I said, I don't do much PVE, so your data will be a lot more accurate. The more games you do, um, the more reliable this data will be. So we can also go up here and there's a couple of wee tick boxes we can uh, choose from. So we'll have an option for free fuel here. And um, so if you look at the moment, uh, Frontier Defense Plastic, for example, um, I can see that I'm earning 103 gold per hour doing that. Um, and that's assuming that I'm paying for the fuel. Um, whereas if I go to free fuel, this will change the results. So instead of 103 coins per hour, if you have free fuel, you're actually making 125 coins per hour. So if you're a fuel farmer and you have surplus fuel, uh, you can toggle this on and off as you need to uh, to check um, your profitabilities. And we can also go to game result and see um, the comparison between winning and losing. So here it's saying that on average, if we're winning games um, with scrap, we're earning 56.43. And if we're losing games, we're only earning 37.23 in scrap. Um, and we've also got a big button here for average. Uh, so at the minute it is showing the average and we can change that to show the total. So in total from the very beginning, and um, this is telling me that I've earned uh, 9,000 coins or near 10,000 coins in scrap um, when I win and this is when I lose. Um, but I prefer to keep that on average for the most part because average is going to give you more reliable information, especially if you've got a large sample size of games to look at. Um, and finally, uh, up here it will tell you your totals, so I'll maybe just reduce this down to look at the last week, for example. Um, 
So here we can see on average this week I've earned 192 uh, coins per hour. Now this is inflated a wee bit by Clam Wars this week because um, I've actually ran quite a bit of it. Um, and again, this is our total coins for this week. So if you want to keep an eye on how much coins you're earning over a particular period of time, you can filter that in. Um, you can also uh, see your queue times and how long you're actually actively playing for, stuff like that. Um, I think that's all I need to talk about with this menu or with this window. I think the next thing we're going to talk about is going to be the Fusion Calculator. So to get to the Fusion Calculator, you go in through the Tools menu here, so we'll just click through to that. Um, so I've already input the cost per item here at the moment as 1460, because I'm looking for this, at this example, I'm looking at Fusion of Yang Wang, which is about 1460 at the moment. Um, so we're going to, in this example, look at getting Yang Wang um, fused for projectile speed. So we don't care about power at the moment, and we don't care about reliability. Um, all we're worried about here is projectile speed. So if we go back to this and we'll notice on reliability we've got it set to 0 out of 3. So we don't care what we're getting in reliability. 0 out of 3 for power because again we don't care. And 1 out of 3 for handling. So the 1 out of 3 means that you want a specific one of the three options there. Um, so in this case it's projectile speed. So if we look over here we can see... Uh, first attempt 33.51, second attempt 55.79. Um, obviously it'd be closer to 33.33% if we were using a calculator to work this out, but the way ROT um, simulates these is basically every time you change one of these filters on the left hand side, um, he automatically runs either a thousand or ten thousand calculations, or ten thousand potential fusions, and sees the results, and this is what you're seeing here, so it's all live. Um, so as I say, uh, at the moment we're looking for just projectile speed, so we're looking for one and three on handling, and we probably would be happy with 80% odds. If I'm fusing something and you, you told me I'd have, have an 80% chance of getting what I wanted, that's where I'd be happy. So we're going to look at this category here, and it's telling us that I would need uh, to fuse them four times. Uh, it's telling me that if an event's on, I would need five of them, and that would cost me 7,300, so that, that event would probably be, uh, you only require two instead of three for the fusion. Um, so that will cost you 7,300 and if there's not an event on it'll cost us nine of them which will cost us uh, 13,140 so if I'm looking just projectile speed on the Yong Wang this is what it's going to cost me uh, not you know you could get it on the first roll but statistically this is telling us that you'll have an 80% chance after doing it four times um, again maybe you're happy with uh, say you were happy with projectile speed or spread we can change this number to two. Oh, let me get this reduced so we can change this number to two um, so now we're saying that if we got uh, projectile speed or spread, we'd be happy. Um, so on your first attempt, 66%. On your second attempt, 88%. So you're effectively saying, if you don't mind, if you get either of those two, that after the second attempt, you would get it. Um, but again, this is most people are looking for one stat, at least in particular. Um, so let me see, what can we look at? We can look at what if um, what if you're going for a perfect fusion, for example. So we'll put a one in each of these categories. So what this is telling um, CodeDriver is that you want uh, a specific one, one of these out of each category. So you want mass, you want damage, and you want projectile speed, for example. And the, this is the odds of getting that. So obviously if you're going for a perfect fusion, it takes you a heck of a lot more attempts. And um, this one goes up to 52% um, at 20. So if you fuse these 20 times, to get a perfect fusion, you're still only looking at 52% chance of getting that in the end. So 50-50 uh, odds, not brilliant. Um, now you can increase that with stabilizers, which we'll talk about in a wee second. Um, but again, you're look at the amount of money you're talking up to uh, potentially 60,000 coins um, to get a perfect fusion on Young Wangs without stabilizers. And again, you might be happy with uh, two items out of a column. So let me see, under, yeah, under par. Um, I think I'd be happy with damage or explosion radius. I don't think my build would benefit from reload speed, so I can change that to two. So I don't mind if I get either of those two options. And what else wouldn't I mind? Um, in this case, I probably wouldn't mind any of these uh, because it's undermounted. I don't really need to worry about resistance or durability. Um, mass would be nice, but again, not essential. So maybe we'll change that to three just to see. So we're saying in the first category here, I don't care what I get. In the second category, I'm saying uh, two out of three. So I'm saying I'm happy with damage and explosion radius. And for handling, I'm saying I want projectile speed. And again, this is the, the results here. So this is where it hits 80%, which again is where I'm usually happy with. Um, so after seven attempts, seven fusion attempts, um, there's an 82% chance that I will get that particular fusion that I'm looking at. Um, it'll cost me during an event 11,000 and it'll cost me non-event 21, well, closer to 22,000. 
um, it'll take me 15 of those items. I'll have to buy 15 Young Wangs and have them sitting in my inventory ready to do this if I want that 82%. Um, now we will, let me see, revert this back a bit. So we'll say we want a perfect fusion again and we'll put stabilizers on it. So let's say we have 20 stabilizers. Um, it's saying if we had 20 stabilizers sitting ready to go to get to 80% for a perfect fusion, um, we would only need to do it seven times. So obviously you can see the importance of stabilizers here because obviously every time that you get uh, one of them locked in that you need, um, whether it be under the handling like projectile speed or power for the damage, um, you can lock that in with your stabilizer um, and then that increases the odds of the next one down the line. So if you have effectively unlimited stabilizers, which a lot of people do, a lot of people don't use them a lot, um, yep, you can really, really bring down your odds. That changes us to 21,900 21, if you had an unlimited amount of stabilizers to get that perfect fusion. Um, or to have a, a fairly good statistical chance of getting that perfect fusion, I should say. Um, yep, so you can do that there with any item you want. Um, as I say, I've used 1,460 because it's a young wang I'm looking at, but you might be looking at uh, a sinus or something like that, so I don't even know how much they are. Let's call it 150 gold at the moment and take the stabilizers down to, um, take them down to just zero actually. And for so for a perfect fusion on this at 150 coins a pop, um, well again we don't have a, a much of a chance of getting it to 50% if we run 20 of them. And again if we put a few stabilizers on there, that'll increase our odds a good bit. So to get with 10 stabilizers now we're saying we've got 81%. And that's only going to cost us 2,250 if non-event or 1,200 if event. So I think that should be pretty self-explanatory. Hope hope I've explained that right for you. Um, but just that. Uh, the next thing we can look at is uh, view available parts and manual part selection. I'm not going to talk too much about these because I don't really use them all that often. Um, but uh, basically with uh, view available parts you get in through tools menu. Um, the only thing that I tend to use this for myself is say you're bumping up against power score and you want to know uh, how much durability, the most durability that you can get on your build for the remaining power score that you have. So I could go to um, this here category, durability by power score, and I can see that defense line is the uh, the most I can get. And then I could look over here, oh, where is it, sorry. Um, look over here to see the power score. So then you would scroll down here, say you had uh, 49 power score, and you wanted to get the most out of that power score again you would tap 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 49 um, and you know the right apc bumper is the most durability you can get for that power score now sometimes you don't want bumpers so again up here in the top right we have a wee option to exclude bumpers sorry it's sort of hidden behind um my wee fps counter there but you can take that off and so now that this isn't including bumpers so again we can go uh, if you're bumping up against power score we can go power score or durability to power score so uh, digger side is the most durability to power score, seconded by thin strike plate, seconded by T pipe. Um, obviously, you would say you would say to yourself, right, I've got uh, 55 power score left over, so you would go over here, and basically you would scroll down here and try to find something as close to 55, or maybe like uh, 227s for 54. Um, there's 57, 55. Uh, in this case, we'll probably be using a combination, so we'll probably go for an Eastern Front and uh, 26. You go for two 26s, so you go for two, two Eastern Fronts. In this case, if you had a 55, um, 55 power score left over, um, again, if, you, if you're under a different constraint, maybe you're under a mass constraint, so here we've got durability via mass. So we can scroll up here and scroll to the top. We can see the most durability we can get for our mass left over is this, is left shielded defender. And again, we can go over here and see the, the mass. So say we had uh, 40 mass left over. We can just scroll down here and just see uh, which one is closest to 40 and highest up the columns. So in this case, I would probably take there's left crutch, so I could take uh, two of those at 19 mass, and that would probably be the most efficient 
um, way to finish off your build and get it as close to your mass cap as possible. Again, you've got other columns here. You've got mass perp to power score, uh, mass to durability, power score to uh, durability, and power score to mass. So it just depends on what your constraint is. Uh, sometimes when I'm building, I'm buffing up against power score because I want to keep it under 8.2k. Sometimes um, if you're running like a cockpit build, for example, you might be uh, your your primary constraints probably your mass limit unless you've got it fused even if you do have a fuse you're probably still running into mass limit issues and um, so this is what you would use this uh, we uh, page for here and i think a manual part selection is much the same it basically lets you drag um parts in here and see their effective durability so if i looked at um a screener for example um let me see can't find what we do for it. screener uh, blah, 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 blah. There we go, screener. Um, so if we click through the screener and we can see it on the left side here and it'll tell us the durability, the mass, the power score. It'll tell us the effective uh, melee durability and effective bullet durability. Um, all the information you need to know about it. And you could also actually build your entire craft in here. So you could sort of say, right, well, I've got, if you're building a big bulky thing, you could say I've got, um, I've got uh, two APC doors and I've got maybe six APC roof parts. Um, so you could basically build your entire build in here and mess about and change things in, change things out. You know how much uh, you know how much mass you've got, you know how much power score you've got, or what power score you're aiming for. So you can build it all in here and swap things out until you're happy and just get the, the highest effective durability here if you're looking for that, or highest effective melee durability, or bullet durability, whatever whatever the case may be, whatever your craft you're trying to build. Um, so I don't want to talk too much more about that because I'm not that familiar with this section. Um, but let me see, the next thing I'll talk about, I suppose, is uh, schedule. So under schedule, under your tools menu, you've got um, your clan wars and your brawl schedule. So clan wars schedule will click through to it, and it just tells you when clan wars starts, when clan wars ends on any given day, whether it's levy clan war or whether it's standard clan war. Um, and also in the settings page, we can set it up for... Um, our location, which means we don't have to do any of those pesky conversions. You know, if in my case I'm UK and I'm playing with Americans 90% of the time, so um, instead of them sending me, oh, Clan War starts in three hours and 15 minutes, you know, instead of working out the exchange and all the rest of it, I can just open up CodeDriver and I know when, and I know when they all start. Um, let me see, the next category is, well, I've already discussed file traces earlier on, but um, the only other one which I tend to use um, is the chat one. So I know there is an app um, for translation from Russian to English in-game or other languages to English in-game. I don't actually use that. I prefer to have this open. And um, if I get a Russian message, I just uh, copy and paste into Google Translate because this is all fully uh, copy and pasteable. So that's what I tend to do. Um, that's the only thing I use that for. Apart from that, I don't really go into file traces all that often unless we're trying to break down something specific. Um, maybe you're trying to analyze how me and Rockfish the other day were analysing how um, tusk damage or ram damage worked. Um, we did actually figure out the equation somewhere. I'll maybe link it somewhere if I find it. Um, but yes, so apart from really in-depth stuff, you don't really ever have to go into like your combat log and stuff like that. It's only if you're doing uh, in-depth research. Um, the next category we can look at is the upload. So in here, if you don't have automatic upload enabled, um, you can come in here and click the upload button and it'll upload all the games since you last uploaded. Um, I have auto up, up uh, auto upload already set up via my settings, so um, I don't have to do this. After every game finishes, it automatically sends it uh, to Crossout DB and updates my stats and updates the stats of any players I've been playing with. Um, again, you, you can get to your profile on Crossout DB by clicking View Profile, and you can also get there by clicking your name here or um, basically anywhere your name is. You can double click, and it'll bring you to your um, Code Driver profile. So. Let me see, or your Crossout DB profile, and uh, capture window, self-explanatory. You click that, and then you can use Control V to copy or to paste that into Discord or um, wherever you want to put it. Um, full screen does what it says in the tin. Click full screen, takes it out of full screen, um, and then we've got settings page. So on your settings page over here, we've got uh, your faction levels. So under your uh, tools menu and view available parts and manual part selection, this will be affected by your selections here. So obviously if you've got all your factions leveled up completely, stick them all to 15 and 30 and all that there respectively. 
Um, if you don't, then you can obviously just reduce them down to the levels you're at, um, so that your available part selection and manual part selection are correct. Um, you can also there's a tick box down here for prestige and pack parts. So if if you've bought if you've been buying the packs and stuff, you can click that there. Um, and if you haven't, then don't. Um, over on the left hand side here, we've just got your username, where your logs and stuff are saved. Um, you've got a wee tick box here for uh, generate stream overlay. Um, you've got your monitor selection, so obviously I've only got one monitor, so I've only got one here. If you have multiple monitors, you would have uh, other options here. Um, language selection and uh, a few different translations. Um, I think we had quite a few people put in their time uh, to offer their services to do translations, so uh, thanks very much to those people. Because um, I don't think it was uh, it was easy, because some things don't really have direct uh, translations, some words. So um, yep, they definitely put in the effort for us. Um, below that we've got uh, themes, so I tend to use static just because I think it's easier to look at. Um, every now and then I'll stick on terminal if I want to feel like I'm in the matrix. Um, and there's just a whole host of other ones. Um, so you can go through them and pick your uh, preference. But I like to stick to static. Um, below here we've got save screen capture, so every time you hit capture window, if you want that to save a copy of that or a picture in a folder, you, you click that there and it will do so. Um, group RAM damage into RAM, and again that's personal preference, just depending on how you want to see your damage on the likes of uh, your match history in your last match. Um, update your screens after each match, you want to have that ticked in my opinion, because then it'll update uh, last match after the game's concluded, so as soon as the last game concludes, it'll update this with the current stats of, of the game. Um, so obviously if you have this open in a wee side menu or something, or a side window. Um, yeah, it's just nice if it just auto-updates, especially if you've got a second monitor and you've just got this sitting open. So you just auto-update and then you can have a quick glance at the stats and then get into your next game. Um, the next one is upload to Crossout DB after each match. Um, again, this is personal preference. The more people you upload, the better, we, better an idea we have of the state of the meta of the game. Um, and the better idea we have of everybody's stats and stuff. Um, some people don't like sharing their stats, that's fair enough, just leave that box uh, unchecked. Um, but you can either have this here ticked and then it'll upload your game after each match, or if you don't want to upload after each match, um, you can go in here, as I say, and do the manual upload yourself. Um, but I think that's it. I think I've sort of covered everything. We've got a wee settings page, or we've got a wee about page here, um, giving you some information on the author. Uh, we've got the website, uh, the Discord links, um, Twitch and Patreon. I'll probably put these here links in the video description below as well. Um, we've got a wee email if you've got any ideas, or you can, if you've got any ideas, you can pop around to the Discord and uh, post them in feature suggestions. Um, and again, down here, we just have some people who have helped develop the software, um, whether that be translating or testing bugs or whatever else it may be. Um, but I think that is it. So I think that concludes this guide. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, you can put them below there and I will try to respond to them. Um, or you can come and hang out in the Discord if you have any suggestions or bugs or anything you want to talk about. Um, until then, I guess all I can say is good hunting and see you out there.